Chloe, you want to get started? Sure. So thank you guys so much for joining us on a weekend. Um, just a very brief intro and flow into our workshop today. So um, I'm going to introduce our founder, Ying Ying Liu, and then also um, Madeline, our writer and also speaker for today's workshop. So I'll hand over to Ying Ying for now and welcome all. Wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. This is uh, wonderful. We're very excited to get our very first workshop started here. Um, let me introduce you, um, Madeline. She, Madeline is, is from South Africa and she has uh, been, well, what does it mean from South Africa? Well, it really means having respect for nature and wildlife. That's what it means from South Africa. Uh, because, you know, we all know there's the scale of killing of wildlife, including sea life. It's really one of the saddest things for her. And she really believed that we, the only way that to stop all this um, wildlife degradation is to make people aware of this devastation. And she believes strongly that just facts alone is not enough. We must connect with people's hearts and there's no better way to connect through the storytelling. And she, because she is a writer and she's been a writer for many years, she wrote plays for the theater. She uh, wrote many short stories as well as an acclaimed novel. And she's the writer for Lumi Voce's um, wildlife story called the story of a baby orangutan, I mean, baby rhino, Lucky. And um, she is a teacher in South Africa. She taught drama and mathematics uh, to senior students in Hong Kong. Now she's the teacher at Forest House Wald Waldorf School in Saikung. Welcome, Madeline. Thank you. And I will hand this to you. Thank you, Ying Ying. Thank you for this opportunity, the opportunity to be able to be part of an organization like this um, is really something that I came unexpectedly to me. And I'm so glad that I've met you and, and, and Lumi Voche, I think I'm saying it incorrectly. Um, as always, be, it's, it's been like it was inspired to, be, to become sort of part of this group. So thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so here we are, we are at this workshop and we are going to talk a little bit about writing. Writing is an art form and therefore every artist has got their own way of, of looking at writing. Um, at the, at the, at the, you know, if you ask another writer, they might give you some other, other advice. So I'm going to talk, tell you how I feel about what I'm doing. And I'm going to give you some advice from my heart because that is what we are doing here. When we are writing stories, when we are writing stories to, to portray a message, what we are doing is we're writing from the heart. So my, the first question I wanted to ask is, who wants to be a writer? Now, some kids will be coming to this workshop or will be watching these videos because their teachers told them to. And some children will be watching this because they really, really want to. And some children might, a little bit of both. But I would like to believe that inside all of us, there's the possibility of creating, whether it's with words or with paint or with music. So let's look at things that will help us to be writers. So I'm going to, yes, there's a hand up. Oh, is your hand up? We, Ying Ying, your hand is up. Okay, so you answered the question, okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to be a writer. Good, fantastic. So the first, the first thing is I want you, all of you to take your pencil and your paper, and I'm gonna ask 10 questions. And the answer is either yes or no. So all you need to do is you need to number the number, the numbers on a piece of paper and write next to each question, whether it's true or false or yes or no. You can, uh, you can just go Y or N, it's, that's also okay. So, so I'm giving you statements. Here's the first one. If you can't spell, 
you shouldn't write, yes or no. Having a plan to write is old fashioned, yes or no. Your story must have a moral so that others can learn something valuable. All good stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Write about things you know, you don't need to do research. Write about what you want to read. The first draft is the best. To be a good writer, you must be a good reader. Use adjectives and interesting words. Not everyone can be a writer. So have you got your answers? Okay, um, how I would like to, to handle the next bit is that you um, unmute yourself uh, um, at everybody, if it's possible. Is that possible, Ying Ying? That everybody yeah, is yeah. unmute. You unmute yourself and um, you, you, you put your, you, you just say your name and, and then whoever says his name first will answer the question. Do you, so shall we try that? Shall we see if that can, 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 can work for us? Okay, so the first one, if you can't spell, you shouldn't write, true or false? False. Good. I don't, I don't know who said that, but it's it's false. You there's wonderful computers and things. If you can't write, do not go into the trap from oh I don't know how to spell this word, so I can't write it. Write it later on. You can check it. Great. Next next one. Having a plan is old fashioned. True or false? False. Oh. Definitely false. Unfortunately, it might feel old fashioned, but you don't get in the car unless you know where you're going to. You don't start writing unless you know where you're going to. The story must have a moral so that others can learn something valuable, true or false? False. It is false, yes. If, uh, thank you very much. I was, um, um, if people write with the idea to teach a lesson, I am convinced that the writing is not as good as it can be. If you write from your heart, then by definition, people will be moved. But teaching a lesson should never be your main aim when you write. All good stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. True or false? I don't know. <laughs> good one. As a matter of fact, um, they all have. Sometimes stories start in the middle and then go to the end. But a good story must have, something must happen in the beginning to make something else possible, to have an outcome, to have an ending. You can swap that around if you are good and, um, and creative. But even if, even a one line story has that, because you get one line stories, so one line story will have an end that happens in the not telling of it. Write about things you know, you don't need to do research. False. Yes, it is false. Definitely false, but it's also true. You have to write about things that you know. When I say things, I mean feelings. If you are going to write about a elephant, my book is about um, Lucky who, whose mother um, gets killed. If you're gonna write about that, you have to go to that place where you know what it feels like to be sad. You have to write a feeling that you know, but you have to do, if I say the elephant was eating um, well, I didn't write about elephants, I write about um, rhinoceros. But if you were saying to say that the rhinoceros ate leaves, then it's wrong. The information that you give is wrong. So you do your research to make sure that what you write, the feelings that you write, that that are true. 
Mm. So but what, how I did it was I first wrote the story and then I checked my facts afterwards. I had to change some things. Um, but, but it's a very good idea to write your story, write the feelings down, especially the feelings that you know, and then to check your facts. Write about what you want to read, true or false. I didn't hear. True. It is true. Um, many children, I've been teaching children for many, many years. Many children makes the mistake to write for what they think the person that's going to market would want to read. So they're thinking, mm, this is a panel, it's a competition, I must write beautifully so that the panel will like it. If you think about the stories that you like to read, think about why you like to read them and imitate that. Write what you would like to read. Forget about the panel, forget about the competition, write from your heart. The first draft is the best. False. Completely false, yes. The art of writing is the art of rewriting. To be a good writer, you must be a good reader. True or false? True. Yes. False? Yeah, it's true, I'm afraid. I don't think that you can make a movie unless you see movies. I don't think you can bake a cake unless you've eaten a cake. I don't think you can write a story unless you read stories. Because, it's, because if you read stories, you would know what makes a story good, but what you like, and then you can, then you can read for that, and write the same kind of story. Use adjectives and interesting words, true or false. <laughs> True. Always true. It is, true. it is true and false. Yes, try and think of interesting word. Yes, use adjectives, but you can overuse it. You can, if you're going to put an adjective with every noun, you are going to overuse your adjectives. So choose a few good ones. Find interesting ways to describe things, but don't fall in the trap of trying to write beautifully. Write in, try, and, try and focus on being interesting. Not everyone can be a writer, true or false? Oh. False. It's, a, it's like sport. I think if we all wake up when we were young, and decide to be tennis players and we practice and practice and practice at tennis. We can all of us at the end be play tennis. We might not be brilliant at it, but we could all be able to learn if we are prepared to practice. Okay, so I'm going to now look at a very good children's story. Just the first paragraph of a very good children's story. I'm sure you all know the, the big friendly giant by um, Roald Dahl. So let's just look at that first paragraph and analyze to ourselves what is the secret of this success. Sophie couldn't sleep. A brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains. It was shining right onto her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtains was wide open but nobody was walking on the pavement outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. So please unmute yourself and, and offer me some reasons for why this is good. First of all, do you all agree that it is good? 
anybody that think this is not good writing it's an opinion so you you can absolutely disagree but then you've got to tell me why okay so anybody want want to offer a reason what for this being good writing why do i think it's good writing um i think it's very full of detail and just by kind of the imagery and kind of sequence that is narrated you can we can really see that image like lie in front of you you can actually right. visualize it yeah okay so i was, I was going to repeat what you said you, uh, you said it was full of Im images you said it was what was the first thing you said to say that again please um i forgot sorry it's just a lot of detail yeah i think detail, detail yes and very good a very good answer anybody else that wants to add to that What is interesting to me, when I read this now for the third, fourth time, I saw something that I didn't see before. And that's a very important thing. He gives detail without giving it. For example, it was no good. Um, hold on, sorry, that's wrong, Let's go back. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. He, he what he does is he, Put that information into the story. He doesn't say the room was full of children. She is an orphan. He gives you the detail as part of the story. So he makes it very interesting. You find things out of out realizing that you find it out. All you do is you're reading a story. And, now, and there's another one. This he says, for example, no voices came up from downstairs. So you know she's living on a top floor. You could say, uh, Sophie lives in a house and she sleeps on the top floor with other children in a dormitory. But what does he do? He gives his detail by putting it into the story. Anything else that you want to say about this? Well, you think. For me, what he does, and this to me is the secret, one of the secrets of good storytelling. He creates atmosphere. If I see a scary movie, the atmosphere gets created by music and it's dark. And you see the man walking with the knife and music playing and there's steps and there's a cat. So a whole bunch of energy goes into creating a feeling of fear. If you are going to read a book about a holiday that was a happy holiday and it might even be a story where two people meet and they became friends for life you're not going to start with a gloomy house you're going to start with sunshine and happiness and feelings and the same is for true for writing the moment this story starts it creates atmosphere so if you are going to write a story and probably you are all going to write sad stories you are going to have to create a feeling, an atmosphere of sadness, even if the beginning is not. Let's say your beginning is happy. Um, in my story, it was like that. Lucky. Um, Lucky and her mother was, were together and they were happy and they were, it was interesting. And then it changed, the atmosphere changed. So you have to create atmosphere. That's the first thing. And the second thing is you have to create tension. You can't go from lucky is in the field, her mother gets shot. You've got to go from lucky, which what I did was lucky went away. She heard a bang. She got scared. She turned back. She saw her mother. She thought her mother was sleeping. We know, the reader knows that mother is dead, but lucky doesn't know. <gasps> so the tension gets built. Those are two very important things. And you've got a pen and pe a pencil and paper, write it down for yourself. Create atmosphere, create tension. And here's, here are ways of doing it. Short sentences. Sophie couldn't sleep. Throw 
the person right into the story with a short, definite sentence. Is that the only way? No, of course not. You can write long sentences too. And you can, it's very good to have short and long and short and long. But do not underestimate the power of a short sentence. You'll, if, if you read it a little bit more, you will see there's many of those. Interesting word, a brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains. He could have written a brilliant moonbeam was falling through a gap in the curtains. But slanting is an interesting word and it helps to create atmosphere. And then all these detail follow that the previous person mentioned. This detail follow and this detail follow and all of this builds up into tension. There's, an, there's another thing that the reader, um, that the, the writer did. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto a face. What is that? Who knows? When I say something is like something, what kind of writing do you call that? You are comparing something with, with something else. You don't need to know the word, but it's quite important that one do that. That you say, my heart was beating like a drum. Oh, okay, somebody raised a hand. Yes, Maris, please tell me. Uh, turn on your, your, your sound and tell me what, that, what you call that. Isn't that a simile? Correct, my child. It's a sim I hope you're a child. <laughs> it's a simile. Correct, yes. Use them, don't be scared of them. Use them, you can use, um, not to, always, always be careful of overusing anything and be careful of using one that everybody knows. My heart is beating like a drum. That's an old summary, everybody knows that one, it's a cliche, but do not be scared of similarities. similarities. So these are some of the things you can do to create atmosphere and tension. So if you've written those two notes down for yourself, I think you are already somewhere towards going to be a writer that people would want to read. Because what makes you a good writer? People want to read, read you. People want to read you. I just said that now. I'm just going to go to the next thing. Another little exercise. I would, there's eight sentences here. So what I want you to do is what you've just learned about, about tension and about um, atmosphere. I want you to read this, these two sentences. There's eight. Choose two for yourself. And try and on your piece of paper with your pencil, finish these two of these sentences. I'll read them with you. The baby rhino struggled to its feet. It looked up and... The noise was like, the gorilla knew something was wrong. The day started. The morpho butterfly felt, now for this one, you need to do, do a bit of research to be able to do that one. The old lion roared angrily. Eddie the sea turtle was excited. There was a hammered shark in my pool. Choose any two. Now the last one is gonna be a little bit funny. It's a bit comedy, which is great. Don't be scared of making people laugh. So choose two. I'm giving you two minutes to come up with two endings of sentences. Starting now.
Okay, that was two minutes, which reminds me of something else I want to say to you. Discipline is a very important element of being a writer. So I do not, often people wait for the inspiration. You can't wait for inspiration. Inspiration comes when you start. You have to make a plan for yourself that every day you're going to work for an hour, half an hour, 10 minutes, however long you need, maybe over weekends longer, but make a time for yourself that you are going to use for writing and do it. Don't go and sit, take up the pen and start, start any sentence. I have written a, a story of me has pub, have been published now in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a short story, in a book full of short stories. And that story, I, I just, I couldn't find, think of anything to write. And I just started one sentence and then that story just happened. So don't wait, be disciplined, be very disciplined and don't wait for inspiration. Inspiration comes to you. Okay, but let's, let's look at these sentences. If anybody choose one, I can't, you are all, all on mute. So I would suggest that if, that you all on mute and that you fearlessly and bravely just say, it. you're going to read your sentence and do it. Anybody chose two? The noise was like. Maybe you should do it the other way around. And um, Chloe, did, did you write, did, did you finish any of these? Paul, Joseph, want to, want to finish any of these sentences? I think, I think Maris was, uh, was uh, unmuted earlier. Okay. Nadia? Do you have something, one of these sentences you want to finish for me? Okay, let's just look at one of them. The day started. How can I finish that sentence? If, you go, if that's going to be your first sentence of your story, you are going to create an atmosphere that is possibly pleasant so that when the unhappy, this, when the hunter comes or when something bad happens, then you will have a different atmosphere. You probably will say the dark, day started beautifully, the sun was shining and Lucky was very happy. Uh, the, the number five, the more for butterfly felt. Now, what's interesting when I was going over the notes that, that you also got um, when you entered this competition, I learned something about this butterfly. And this butterfly would fly up in the air. And then when you look at it, it that's his way of protecting himself against predators. He, would, he, he had big, he has big, um, spots on its wings that looks like eyes. So that's his way of threatening predators. So you can say the morpho butterfly has big spots on his wings and then, and then but you're not busy with research. So you've got to tell the story. You've got to say the, butter, the morpho butterfly felt safe. He knew that no one will attack him today. His spots on his wings has grew magnificently. That's what I mean by using your research that it becomes part of your story. Um, for, your, for your own sake, um, if, if, you, if you didn't feel like sharing now or didn't feel like doing it now, then please practice this kind of thing at home. Start to ask somebody to start you a sentence and then what you do is you, you finish that sentence. It's a good way of helping yourself to think clearly and to create stories that's beautiful okay so let's go to the next slide a plan we've spoke about this before beginning a middle and an end a plan can be as short as you possibly want it to be i tend to work very hard on a plan for me 
a plan is very important. So I, I don't just have a sentence for the beginning and a sentence for the middle and a sentence for the end. You can you can you can start your story by saying, um, uh, um, Lucky and her, and her mother are together in, in the field. And you can say Lucky's mother get killed, and the last paragraph, the last sentence, or you can write is Lucky finds a new home. So you've got three. You've got basically a skeleton on which you will hang the rest of the story. I tend to plan very specifically to know how how long the beginning will be, how long the middle will be, how long the end will be. But you do not have to do that. And what is quite amazing about the creative process, sometimes your plan changes. And that's okay. Your plan is there to help you, not to stop you. So if you have started off by saying that lucky is going to be okay at the end, and then you, as you start writing your story, it's no longer true. Then you change your plan. We tend to think that people want to read stories with happy endings. I do, but it's not necessarily true for everybody. So you can have a story with a sad ending, as long as it's not unnecessarily sad, as long as there's some sort of a lesson. Now, we did say we don't want to teach stories with morals, but if you read, write truly from the heart, it ends sadly, then that is the way it must end. It's your story, it's your creativity, it's your plan. Here's another exercise. I think maybe instead of you speaking, I'm going to ask you to write possible answers. I'm going to give you two minutes again for each of these slides. Please participate, really appreciate that. I'm giving you a beginning. I want you to tell me what happens next. You don't have to write a paragraph. You can simply write a sentence or two. Okay, this is the beginning. You know, the rhino has a headache and he feels like a fool. All his friends are laughing at him because he keeps on attacking trees, but he can't help it. Anyway, his friends are silly. They can't see well either. Some research I've done, rhinos are a little bit blind. And they do in nature often attack trees. I think trees are enemies. So I read that fact and I build it into a story. Okay, so now the story creates a feeling of, of, a, of a rhinoceros that's unhappy and is angry at his friends. So what happened next? Please use the chat function to answer. Two minutes starting now. Okay, so let's see if there's any messages. Oh, uh, the day started like a stinky smell, quiet and sly, but eventually terrible. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful sentence. Thank you, Paul. It's, it, it's, it's got a summary, it's got interesting words, it immediately creates atmosphere. Great. But that's the previous. Okay, all right, wait, wait, wait. You know, then had his horn stuck stuck on in a tree and could not okay stick okay you know then sees a man with a gun approaching you great that is the next part fantastic you use the beginning he, he bumped into a into a tree and then you use that for your next part that his horn gets stuck great anybody else okay great thank you so much for that two beautiful contributions 
Let's go to the next slide. This now I'm giving you a problem. As soon as she heard the loud bang, she knew something was wrong. Without thinking about it, she ran. Her instinct, instincts edged her on. Run, run, run. But her heart speaks louder than her instincts. She has a son, a beautiful calf with lovely big ears, a handsome trunk and trusting eyes. Then she stops and looks back. Come up, I'm giving you another two minutes. Come up with what happens before this moment. Please feel free to read the contributions. It is, it is um, there for everybody to see. Thank you, Ying Ying. That is so nice. It's more difficult to start because you want to immediately start telling the story. So it's quite difficult to have a problem and then to think of how the story will begin. But thank you. That's beautiful. Let's see if there's anybody else that has made a contribution. Um, I, I'll read Ying Ying's. She and her son are enjoying the peaceful day and eating grass under a beautiful sunshine, undisturbed. And suddenly she heard a loud bang out of nowhere. It's fantastic. So in other words, you create a feeling of here they are, they're at peace, nothing is a problem, and then something happens. And I don't think you can find any story. Think about fairy tales, for example, any story that does not have that pattern. For example, Red Riding Hood, a little girl, going somewhere, she's got a red cape, she's got a basket, she's happy, she's going to see a grandmother, and the wolf comes. That is the secret, one of the secrets of this. Great. I think I've skipped a few pages now, sorry, let me go back. You have another contribution there. Oh, I have, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, let me go back to that. In the chat box. Yep. On a hot, oh, thank you very much. On a hot summer morning, Ben was happily playing with his cousins in the mud. Wow. The mother, seeing the calf as happy and in a safe environment, venture out a few steps to drink some water. Thank you, Shana. That is beautiful. And it also immediately does what it is, what is expected. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give uh, two more, one more. But this, and, and it will be nice to have two different people contributing this time. This is, a, this is the next one. I'm giving you the problem, and this time I don't want the beginning, but I want the end. James cannot believe his own eyes. His father is hammering away at one of the corals. Does his father not know that it is endangered? When his father said they must go diving, James had no idea what his father's intention was. James feel like, feels like crying. So this is a boy 
that has got that sees his father doing something wrong. So come up with an ending. I'll give you only a minute this time, maybe two. I'll see how, see how what the contributions looks like. Okay, two minutes is over. Let's just see if I've got any response. Okay, good. So, uh, did I did I miss something? I, I don't see any responses here. Can anybody, oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Here's another one. James wanted to tell his dad to stop, but he knew he wouldn't listen. After holding back his tears for a few minutes, James couldn't stand it anymore. He knew he had to do something. Jam James swam towards forwards and grabbed the hammer. Oh, that gives me cold shivers. Beautiful. Thank you, Nadia. Here's one more. Ignoring his training, James raced for, his, for the surface as if the open air could somehow clean his shock. Beautiful. Oh, I'm so happy with you. I don't think you need to, I think you can all give your own workshops. You're doing very well. Thank you. Jan had to tell his dad to stop, but he knew he wouldn't listen. After holding, uh, I, 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 wrote, I read that one already. Thank you. So, so I hope that this somehow will inspire you to, to, start so let's just go over the things that we have mentioned so far start writing be disciplined don't wait for inspiration the inspiration will come once you start write from the heart do your research write of a plan create your atmosphere and your tension but this as far as I'm concerned, is the most important thing of them all. If you only learn one thing from me today, let this be it. Show, don't tell. Now, that is, I don't know if you know what it means. I'm going to assume you don't. If you do know what it means, forgive me. What it means is that here is a sentence that tells. Elephants are clumsy animals. But that is telling me 
something. If I want to show it, I can say, Ben the elephant are clumsily walking after his mother, falling over trees. Here's another one. The leopard has spots. That's telling. How can I show that? I can say something like, the mother leopard realized that a son is growing up because his spots are becoming so beautiful that she would recognize him anywhere. Now, I've got to be careful of that one because I don't know if that's true. After I've written that sentence, I will have to go back and read about leopards and see if that's true. Maybe baby leopards from the start have spots. I think they don't, but I've got to check that fact. But I first write that feeling. So show, don't tell. Rhinos eat grass. I'm telling you. But if I'm showing it, I could say, Lucky loves the sweet new grass early in the morning. That is really the last thing I wanted to share with you. And I, as, I, as I've said, if this is the only thing that you learned from me, the other thing is also important, but if this is the only thing that you take from today, write this show, don't tell. Now, um, um, I will, you will all get this, a copy of this. Am I right, Chloe? This is a rubric for yourself. So this is how I write. This is my process. I write my story. I make my time. I take, my, I take a week and I write my story. Then I put that story away. A week later, I read that story again. And then I take out this rubric and I check whether or not I've done it. Don't check immediately because you are still, your feelings are still with the essay. You love your story and you will say yes, yes, yes to everything. Give yourself a week, let the story rest and then look at it again. After that, give it to somebody else and ask them to read it for you. Okay, I um, that's all from me. I'm going to um, now ask, allow you to ask questions if you want to. I might not know the answers, um, but I've got some of some other people that can help with the answers. I might not even know the answers about writing because it's a process, it's an art form. Other people might answer differently. I'm going to stop this now. Thank you very much for everybody for being here. Thank you, Madeline, and um, thank you so much for the workshop. And if you have any questions, just feel free to unmute yourself or text in the message box and Madeline can answer your uh, question. So let me be the first one to ask. <laughs> um, sorry, I actually just saw a question from Paul. Uh, where can we find your short story? Um, well, the, this, uh, Ying Ying, maybe you can answer that question. Um, I think the story is for you, Madeline. Uh, people want to read your stories. So mm. I'm afraid that I don't, uh, most of my stories is not in English. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, um, I, I've, I've belonged, to, but but I the, the story that I actually my only English story that's ever been published is the one that Ying Ying has published. Yes, um, with the uh, the story of Baby Lucky, and that you can find on um, Lumi Voce website. So you can go to our website and go to the stories, and you will see um, we have on. Flip snack you can you can read and also we have um, on um, actually print form as well so uh, reach out to us and we're happy yeah I think uh, Chloe already sent in the um, the address for the shop so oh, you feel can, free to um, take a look yeah. There's a question here. How many drafts you, do you often go through? Okay, with this short story that has just been published recently, I wrote that story originally in English, interestingly enough. I was part of a, of a workshop um, of people that meet once a week. It's actually a meetup, and I wrote the story there. So that was the first draft, and then I put it away. And then this, um, uh, this person uh, came to me and asked me to if, if she can um, 
if I can, if I've got a story to contribute to, to to this book. So then I took the story and then I translated it into Afrikaans. That was my second draft. And then I about I would say I re write about four to five drafts and I'm not scared of other people's criticism that's very important people shouldn't be precious about their writing so I would write I would write my draft and then uh, write a second draft and even a third draft and then I would usually give it to somebody whose opinion I trust somebody that's not just going to be nice to me and then some of it I take because I mean it's also personal and some of it I don't but I'm not I never get angry or upset when people could criticize anything that's very important then oh yes that's true okay that so then i would write another draft and before i actually send it out i would read it one more time the problem is you can work and work and work on it you can never you would never really be 100 percent happy at some stage you've got to stop you've got to say this is it i'm done i'm sending it away mm. <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing. I that actually sort of answered my question that I was holding is when do you know you actually finish? You know, ah. artists, it's very hard because it's very of hard. Are perfectionists, right? It and is. we want it to be absolutely perfect. So you just continue to work. So when do you actually allow yourself to say, well, I'm going to stop? <laughs> The, the, it is a very good question and it's true and that's part of the discipline mm -hmm. at some stage you have to i mean you can every time you read you can make changes at some stage you've got to stop and when i, I think that depends on on if you have a deadline it's good because <laughs> then it forces you to stop um so so um if you if you are if you're writing because somebody has asked you to write something then there's a deadline thank goodness for that Otherwise, what you what you must be very careful of is, re, is rereading the same bits over and over. So you so you reread this bit, you you change that. The next day you reread that bit and you change that, and the next day you reread that bit and you change that. And then you give yourself don't. Well, if you're on the drafts, if you're at the draft stage, I would suggest that you take a day between. If you work on it constantly every day, it becomes. It, you will drive yourself crazy because of that perfectionist thing you just mentioned. Great, great. Uh, I'll ask a question if that's okay. Sure. Um, so you said you didn't write it in English. So actually in which language did you write the uh, short stories and what, what is the story behind? Uh, well, the, the one I've written now, the one that's the, the, the most recent published one, is for, it's for it's adult literature. So, um, and I wrote it originally, believe it or not, in English because I was here in Hong Kong, but I usually write in, um, in Afrikaans, I, which is my home language, also I'm from South Africa. Oh, but wow. I, I, I hate to admit this, please don't tell anybody, <laughs> but I, I prefer reading English. So, um, and when I was part of this meetup group that was that we were writing every week, I realized how much I love writing in English. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. I don't know too many people from Africa, let alone writing in that language. This is, and it's, um, what's interesting about, about, about my novel, for example, there's, there's um, it's a small group. I mean, if you write in English, the world is your is your audience. If you write in Afrikaans, you've only got this one country's people, um, but they are dedicated. They want to buy in their own language. So you've got you've, people buy your book because it's their language and they like to read in their own language. This is interesting. That's great. I think you have a question from Maris. Um, okay. It's here, Maris. Let's see. When do you usually finish writing a book? <laughs> Um, the book uh, I've written two novels the one has not been published yet the first one has been published that book took me a year to write and then I send it to the to the to the um um, um what do you call them people that that <laughs> yes um and then it came back to me and then I rewrote it it took me another three months but because now I had somebody else that makes the decisions um, the, the editor made the decisions now um, it was I was free from that idea that it had to be perfect she had to decide that it's perfect or not so all in all together it took me 
a year, year and three months to write a book, which is actually not bad. Some people take five, six, seven years to write a book. But that year, that my first draft, I was very disciplined. Every morning before I went to work, I worked for half an hour. And then over weekends, I would put all those half an hour works together. Every day I wrote, except one day over the weekend I took off. But I, I wrote six days out of seven days I wrote. And that took me a year. Wow. <laughs> really, so you talk about discipline. That really does take a lot of discipline. But I must also say that it is the most rewarding thing in the world. I mean, every artist would be able to, you, you must know that. It is it's so rewarding to yes. end up with something that is out there, part of you that goes into the world. Exactly. I mean, your story of uh, Baby Lucky will live on, right? In the yeah. children read it and in all of us who has read it and hopefully you know, it has inspired other, um, both illustrations and other children to write. So yes, the illustrations are beautiful. And yeah. that reminds me, Ying, we have part of this competition. Don't you want to just share with the children how the competition works? And now there's three parts. There's a part where they can write their own story. And, that, and that's what I really addressed today. But there's also they can look at the at the pictures. Don't you yeah. want, to, want to take that to explain that yeah. a little bit, Ying? So if, um, uh, if you are interested in, especially in the writing part, the Voices for the Planet uh, competition on the writing, you can, yeah, Chloe is going to show us and you can, uh, you can create um, your own original wildlife story, but you can also write um, uh, following the illustrations that we already have for Baby Lucky and for a Baby Orangutan and also for um, a, a Baby Elephant. So uh, for each of the stories, you can simply follow the illustrations and then write. We have uh, amazing writers from last year, all the kids from uh, primary school and also secondary school. So depends on your interest. You can really, you know, yeah, obviously if you do to write your own wildlife story, you need to do a lot more research like Madeline said earlier. You need to really understand, let's say you're, you're gonna write about a, a pangolin, you will need to understand where does pangolin live and what is their habitat and what is the challenge that they're facing? Um, why are, are they being poached, the most poached and trafficked mammal in the world? So you need to do a whole lot of uh, research and how many species of pangolins are there? Where do they live in Africa and also in Asia, in Indonesia, in Southern China, and so on and so forth. And, and so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting uh, information that you can explore about these wildlife, um, uh, the situations that they're facing. And so you can construct uh, a beautiful story about that if you're interested. So check out our um, Voices for the Planet competition online. Everything is online. There's a lot of information. So maybe Chloe can put uh, the link into the chat panel for us. Then you can follow us, okay? It's a very interesting question here. Sorry, Chloe, from, from, from a, a person, from um, Maris, about what do you feel when you write a book? Um, I, I, I live, those characters are alive to me. I mean, when, Lucky when Lucky's mother died, I actually was crying when I was writing it. So that's what I feel. I feel really deeply about my characters and then I know my reader will too. So you can't be completely neutral if you write. You've got to have the feelings when you write it. Otherwise, well, you, you know, like I said, other people might differ from me, but I was physically crying when Lucky's mother died. And uh, I can tell you, uh, Madeline, when I read your story about Baby Lucky, I was crying too. So, so that, yeah. So, so the question: How do you feel? You have got to feel. It's, it's, you, you can't put it on. If, if you are feeling writing from your heart, your feelings will be true. Thank you. 
Okay, so there's the link. Okay, Chloe. Um, Chloe? Yes. And uh, our next, um, our next um, workshop actually coming up on the 20th at four o'clock. And uh, it's by a Hong Kong um, a marine biologist and, and a conservationist, Benita. And she will talk about Hong Kong strange creatures uh, in that living in the Hong Kong habitat, which would be very interesting as well. But thank you so much, Madeline. This is so enlightening. And I've learned a lot. I'm going to have to start doing some writing myself. <laughs> right, I'm glad, I'm glad. There's one more question that came up. Is it possible for someone to write, to, to take 10 years to write a book? I know of people that take that long. I think at some stage, you the discipline of, of writing is one thing, but the discipline of knowing when to stop is also important. If it takes you 10 years, yes, that's fine. But then stop after 10 years. <laughs> I would suggest. <laughs> Okay, well, wonderful. The great many good questions. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Uh, you so know, much. everybody, and and this is really inspiring, Madeline. Thank you. And we will put um, we will put this on uh, YouTube and also on our social media, so a lot more people will be able to see this and benefit from this. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. There's more, hold on, just hold on. Oh no, that's it. I thought there was more people talking. Okay, we have to stop at some stage. We have to have the discipline. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Ying Ying and Chloe, for organizing it so beautifully. And we will see you, Madeline. And uh, when children's competition coming up, uh, we'll see you on the panel judges, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.